Akimbo and the Elephants, Chapter 8 Elephants in Danger As they set off along the tracks of the poachers, Akimbo wondered whether they would be in time. Sooner or later, the poachers would catch up with the herd of elephants, and once they did that, the fate of the elephant with the handsome tusks would be decided. Akimbo did not care so much if the poachers got away, although he wanted them to be caught. What really mattered to him was stopping them from killing that elephant. And it seemed such a painfully slow chase. Can't we go faster? Akimbo asked his father. If we don't hurry, they'll have got the tusks by the time we get anywhere near them. Akimbo's father patted his son on the shoulder. If we go too fast, we'll lose their trail. A tracker needs time. And so they inched their way onwards until the tracker suddenly held his hand up and everybody stood stock still. The head ranger moved quietly to the tracker's side. What is it? he whispered. The tracker pointed down to the ground. They're ten minutes ahead of us, the tracker said. Look! He pointed down to the print of a man's boot in the soft sand. It was fresh and clear, and the tracker knew that it had been made only minutes before. The head ranger signalled to his men to advance more carefully. Now they moved even more slowly, watching each footfall, avoiding stones and twigs and anything else that could give their presence away. They had reached a place where the ground sloped sharply upwards. Ahead of them was the brow of a hill, and on the other side of that the ground sloped gently away to a plain. The elephants were standing at the edge of a large clump of trees. They were foraging, reaching up with curling trunks to the high branches of trees, their ears fanning slowly to keep the flies away. There were several mother elephants with their young, and there, at the edge of the herd, was the magnificent male with his heavy tusks. The sight of the elephants distracted the rangers. They had not expected to come across them so quickly, and at such close quarters. Nor had they expected to see the poachers so close to them, crouching only forty or fifty yards away. Akimbo took in the scene in an instant. He saw the leader of the group of poachers half rise to his feet and bring the rifle to his shoulder, waiting for his opportunity to fire the shot that would bring his quarry crashing to the ground. The seconds ticked past. Akimbo looked about him. Nobody seemed to be doing anything, and he wondered whether the others had seen the leader. If they had not, then there was only one thing for him to do. From his crouching position, Akimbo shot to his feet and launched himself forwards with a yell. He was aware of his father's cry of horror, but he lurched on, waving his arms, heading straight towards the herd of elephants. There was a sudden rumpus of movement amongst the elephants. The smaller ones were quickly fussed away by their mothers, while the great elephant with the tusks spun round to face the source of the disturbance. When the large elephant saw Akimbo, his ears flapped out and his trunk went up. No! shouted Akimbo's father. Akimbo, stop! The poachers burst out of their hiding places and stared at the boy. Their leader rose up and lowered his gun, looking around him in astonishment, uncertain what to do. Then he saw the rangers behind Akimbo and let out a cry of alarm. The elephant was scenting the air. Akimbo had now dropped to the ground and was sheltering behind a small bush. The large elephant had lost sight of him now, and was peering in the direction from which he had been coming. He began to advance, trumpeting a warning as he did so. Akimbo looked out from behind his hiding place. He could see the bulk of the elephant coming towards him, but he was not sure if he could, it could see him. He knew that he was in great danger, but for some reason he felt quite calm. His father's words came back to him. The best thing to do is to stay quiet and still. And he was right. The elephant took a few more steps forwards, and then, no longer aware of the presence of the threat, he moved back to the herd and began to lead them off into the trees. As he did so, Akimbo stood up to get a better view of them. The elephant with the large tusks was encouraging the herd to move faster, pushing against one or two of the reluctant ones, urging the others on with swinging movements of his trunk. Akimbo caught his breath. There were several baby elephants in the herd, and one of them he was sure he had seen before. Yes, there was no doubt about it. It was a baby elephant with a tear in its right ear. 
so it had been found by the herd and it was being looked after. With the elephants dispersed, the rangers turned their attention to the poachers. The leader realised the gang were outnumbered and surrendered himself almost immediately. He was followed by all of his men. They glowered in anger at Akimbo, but Akimbo did not mind. The poachers could do him no harm now. Akimbo's father seemed too shocked by what had happened to say much to his son on the way back to camp. After a while, he managed to speak, still trembling. You were very, very lucky there. I thought the elephant would get you before we had time to do anything. It almost did, but it was the only way I could warn it. It was still no reason to take that risk. If you hadn't found that bush to drop behind, I don't know, but I did find it. The head ranger, who had been listening to them, now joined in. You were very brave. If it hadn't been for you, that elephant would have lost its life. Back at the camp, the rangers arranged for the police to come out to collect the poachers, and the head ranger had to pass on the information he had received about Matimba. He enjoyed doing this, as it would give him great pleasure to see Matimba arrested and his cruel trade in stolen ivory brought to an end. But there was only one thing that Akimbo wanted to do. He lay down on his sleeping mat, feeling all the aching tiredness flow out of his weary limbs. Within seconds, he was asleep. He slept for almost twenty hours, and at some point in that long sleep he dreamed. He dreamed of the elephants. He dreamed that he was out on the savannah, watching the elephant with the great tusks walk slowly through the waving golden grass. And as it walked past, it turned and looked at him. This time, it did not prepare to charge, but lifted its trunk, as if to salute Akimbo, its friend. And Akimbo raised his hand to it too, and then watched it walk slowly away. And that's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed that one. I'll be starting the next one soon, which is Akimbo and the Lions.